The battle between Uber and Lyft. This is one of the newest and most intense business rivalries happening today. It's fun to watch because you don't get new ones like this too often. There's been a lot of talk about these two over the past few years. We all know that they've been a major blow to the traditional cab companies and have changed transportation as we know it. But if you follow the stock market at all, you would know that there's really been a lot of talk about these two recently. And that's because they're both becoming public companies. This is all happening so fast and at the same time. As a result, we're learning a lot about them. Private companies don't have to release their figures to the public, but public companies do. I mean, if you can't see the figures, how can you decide where to invest? This means that for the first time, for both Lyft and Uber, we're finally learning how they're doing. They're each required to file a prospectus, which has a ton of information on it, and I've been reading them. So, I thought this would be a great time to make a video that compares Lyft and Uber. First, I think it would make sense to take a quick look at how they both started. Uber goes back to 2009 and Lyft goes back to 2012, though they have roots that go back five years before that. I'll get to it. For the inception of Uber, there's two guys to talk about here, Travis Kalanick and Garrett Camp. Camp was the co-founder of a company called StumbleUpon that was sold for $75 million in 2007, and Kalanick was the co-founder of a company called Red Swoosh that was sold for $15 million in 2007. The story goes that one year later, the two were attending a tech conference in Paris. They had trouble getting a cab and came up with a concept for a business that was similar to what Uber would become. They dropped the idea for a little bit, but then in early 2009, Garrett Camp went right back to it. An app was developed, he convinced Kalanick to come be a part of it, they ran trials, and by May of 2010, Uber cabs were available to the public in San Francisco. Initially, it cost about 50% more than a traditional taxi, but it was more convenient and they had higher quality cars, so they didn't have much trouble finding people willing to pay the premium. Later that year, the city of San Francisco ordered them to stop conducting business, but they worked it out partially by dropping the cab part from their name and simply going by Uber. They quickly expanded into other cities around the country, initially the big ones, New York, Chicago, Boston, but of course, they've since expanded all around the country and internationally. Over the years, they've raised money for all of this, mostly through different rounds of funding, exchanging cash, for a piece of ownership. For the first of these in 2011, their valuation was around $50 million. By 2013, they were into the billions, and in 2019, for their IPO, they're setting their valuation around $100 billion. Obviously, they've come a long way in the past eight years. For the inception of Lyft, there's also two guys to talk about here, John Zimmer and Logan Green. The way this company started is a little hard to believe. It was initially called Zimride, and you would assume it was named after John Zimmer, but actually, Logan Green came up with the name before he even met Zimmer. As it turns out, the Zim part of the name came from Zimbabwe. Green had recently been there and took notice how everyone over there shares rides. This strange naming coincidence is actually part of what brought them together. The two had a mutual friend on Facebook. Green posted something about Zimride on that friend's page. Zimmer came across it and was immediately interested and confused because it was similar to his idea and contained part of his name. The two of them connected through that mutual friend and soon started working together on Zimride. The idea behind Zimride is carpooling. They focused their efforts around college campuses and provided a way for people to connect that wanted to carpool long distance. All pretty solid ideas, and Zimride was pretty successful in functioning like this over the next five years. Then in 2012, they saw greater potential. I'm sure they saw the success that Uber was having and figured that they can start something using their methods and get in on it in their own way. At that time, Uber was serving more wealthy people. They only had their black car service, which is pricier and involves higher end cars. The guys at Zimride envisioned something similar that can serve everybody. Within weeks of the idea, they launched the Lyft app, which was essentially an every man's version of Uber. Then, very soon after, Uber started offering UberX, which was essentially an every man's version of Uber. 
Viper that has since become their most popular option. So right in the middle of 2012 is when you can say that the battle between Uber and Lyft started. Back to today, one of the biggest things that I'm interested in comparing is their market share. This can tell you a lot. According to Second Measure, Uber is bigger. They always have it, <laughs> there's no surprise there. But Lyft is gaining on them pretty fast. Just four years ago, they were hanging around a 10% share, and today, that's around 30. This graph also shows just how much these two dominate the US ride-hailing market. There are other services out there. There's Via and Juno, both of which I've actually never heard of. Unless you're from a major city, I'm guessing that's the case for you too. Uber and Lyft combine for 98% of the industry, and everything else combines for the remaining two. But I do want to mention, there is some conflicting data here. Lyft states that they have a 39% market share, which was confusing to me until I learned that the company that provided that figure may have a bit of a conflict of interest. I'm not accusing anyone of anything, but I'm more inclined to believe the third party figures. But either way, they're gaining. Let me theorize the reasons behind it. Well, Lyft has been pretty aggressive in their marketing. Specifically, in 2016, they spent more money on sales and marketing than anything else. Their marketing expenses were actually higher than their sales, if you can believe that. They also tend to have lower rates for travelers and greater incentives for drivers. But I would guess a bigger reason they've been catching up is Uber's been controversial and it's caused people to switch over. Some of the stuff I'm talking about. Sexual harassment claims. Self-driving cars being released in California without a permit and then running red lights. Spies. Hashtag delete Uber. That was a whole political thing that caused about 500,000 people to delete their Uber account. Misleading drivers about how much they can earn. That was a $20 million lawsuit. And then there's underpaying New York City drivers. That's a separate thing. And many more. All of this led to their CEO, another controversial figure, stepping down in 2017. Whereas Lyft has a pretty clean image. Getting to some figures. Revenue for Uber was over $11 billion in 2018, which is about five times higher than Lyft, who brought in about $2.2 billion. It's worth noting that those numbers are definitely growing. The entire market is growing fast, and they're basically the only two taking advantage of it. But Lyft is growing at a much faster rate. The reason Uber's revenue is so much higher can be explained by their greater share in the US ride-hailing market, but also because they have a much greater presence internationally. Uber provides services all around the globe, whereas Lyft only operates in the US and Canada. That's 63 countries compared to two, and that's a pretty major difference. Uber also makes a lot more money because they're involved in a lot of things beyond ride hailing. Ride hailing was only 9.2 billion of that. 1.5 billion came from Uber Eats. You can't forget about Uber Eats. According to Uber, it's the largest meal delivery platform in the world outside of China based on gross bookings. They have a network of more than 220,000 restaurants in over 500 cities globally. It's a good option for the drivers to make these food deliveries when there's not much else going on. And for the last couple years, there's also been Uber Freight, their service that connects shippers and carriers of goods. So Lyft is much more focused, whereas Uber has expanded into other related things. But for both companies, and this is the thing that everyone's been talking about, they're losing money. Uber had about a a $3 billion operating loss for 2018, and for Lyft, it was just under $1 billion. This makes everyone question, is it even a good business model? They are bringing in a lot of money, but once they're done paying for their insurance and marketing and everything else, <laughs> there's nothing left. Will they be able to figure it all out and eventually start turning a profit? Because it's not looking like it. Neither one of them has much of a plan on how to do it. The model may have flaws, but from my perspective, they seem to be more concerned with edging each other out than they are with strengthening themselves. But they kind of have to be. It's a two-person fight, and neither one of them can afford to let their guard down. But whatever the reason behind it, it's not good. Listen to this, it's from Uber. We have incurred significant losses since inception, including in the United States and other major markets. We expect our operating expenses to increase significantly in the foreseeable future, and we may not achieve profitability. Also, I don't like the sound of this one. We will need to generate and sustain increased revenue levels and decrease 
disproportionate expenses in future periods to achieve profitability in many of our largest markets, including the United States. And even if we do, we may not be able to maintain or increase profitability. It doesn't sound like they have a very positive outlook. So understandably, investors are apprehensive. I mean, doesn't it seem strange to be valuing a company around $100 billion when they're not making any money and probably won't be anytime soon? It means that the price they're paying is really based on the company's potential and if they can get all this together down the line. This video is being made in the very specific time between their initial public offerings. Lyft had theirs on March 29, 2019 and Uber's is happening soon. That Lyft IPO valued the company at around $24 billion, whereas Uber's will likely be around four times higher. We can continue comparing stuff, but I think we get the picture. Lyft is laser focused on that US ride hailing market and for a variety of reasons, they've been doing well in it. Uber, on the other hand, is, well, they're much bigger by any measure, and they have much more of a broad focus in other countries and other services, yet neither one of them is making any money. Let me know in the comments, what do you think of all this? There's a lot here, but what do you think the future will look like? Will Lyft continue gaining ground on Uber and eventually find a way to take over the whole market? Or will Uber find a way to start gaining it back? Or maybe they'll both be gone soon. Eventually, they're going to have to find a way to start making money. Uber's already had a decade to figure it out, and they're not even close. Lyft doesn't have any answers. What do you think? What do they have to change to start making a profit? Oh, and here's another question. To the users and to the drivers, which do you prefer? When you need to get somewhere, how do you decide which to use? Is it just the price or is there something else? I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.